The point of this experiment was to try and gauge commercially available products for jumpstarting the nitrogen cycle against more traditional methods, from just adding fish to seeing the aquarium with an already filtered biomedia. The two products were referred to as product A and product B. Now we're back with a few results. Since it would take too long to rattle off specific numbers at specific time increments in this video, I've written everything up uh, that we logged at the NatureAquarium.com. Just go to the Experiments tab, hit the Nitrogen Cycle Experiment, and scroll down. You can also find out some specifics about the commercial products that we were using. Product B was interesting. There was never, at any point, a readable amount of ammonia in the system, so this would mean that there was ample nitrosomas available in the container still to neutralize that ammonia and take it out of the equation. And again, you can find that under the experiments tab, and you can read our logs for yourself. Meanwhile, product A had some schizophrenic numbers, and would bounce between the heights in ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates. Now, this experiment is not complete. We wanted to run this for a while longer than we could have, but our heater failed on a very cold night, and out of safety we removed the fish and ended the experiment. You can read the details of that on the site. That doesn't mean that we're not going to test this again. There's a number of reasons to. For one, next time I'd like to do it without fish so we won't have to worry about ammonia spikes killing the livestock. We'll simply add some kind of organic material, maybe even just straight diluted ammonia uh, instead of fish food to get things running their course. Secondly, the fact that this experiment was cut much shorter than the goal that we had in mind. And thirdly, there's no reason in performing a test if you can't repeat the results. Now that also includes the CO2 experiment that we're doing, the bogwood and driftwood experiment that we want to get to one day. So just so it's said now, that is a rule we are playing by. Everything has to be repeatable. But the primary reason to repeat this test has to do with the variables concerning the commercial products themselves. You have to keep in mind these bacteria need certain temperatures to survive and thrive. In fact, a previous version of one of these products had to be refrigerated. With that in mind, think about shipping these live bacteria colonies. What would happen if they were exposed to extreme hot and then extreme cold? What would happen to the viability of these products? That alone is reason enough to perform a second round of tests. Which also means we'll have to be talking to the people that we source our stuff from. These commercial products, when did they come in, what is the temperature like, where did they come from, so on and so forth. So as you can probably tell, there's a lot of very trivial matters that have to go into this before we can do a second round of tests. This one failed. Thankfully it failed for a half-decent reason, but it has given me pause and think about what's happening and how to address it next time. And next time there will probably be distilled ammonia. Next time there will probably be a report on where this stuff came from, what the temperature and the weather was like in shipping, uh, that sort of thing. So that's it. If you want to know more, the NatureAquarium.com, go to the Experiment tab, go down to the Nitrogen Cycle Experiment. You can see all of our data points there. You can see a complete list of what happened in chronological order, and hopefully that is of some use to you. We will be repeating this experiment again. If you have thoughts, if you have ideas, if there's something we're overlooking, please let us know we're on social media. I'll add this as an afterthought. If you want to know what product A and product B are, you're going to have to go to the website to find out.